Hello, everybody. My name is Dr. Quick. <laughs> well, of course, my name is Ash. I'm an employee of Kiai Tech, the ClickBot team. And today, I'm going to run you a trial of our official ClickBot Academy video session. In this session, we're going to teach you how to use and specifically provide you with a full-scale guidance on how to use ClickBot, especially this very advanced features like the Google Block Blockly. And like today, I'm going to deliver you this one, a remote control car with an IR sensor in front of it. Let me show what it can do. Pull, drag, and push. May the force be with you. <laughs> so how is possible, like, this feels almost like a magic, right? It's actually, the mechanism is very simple. It's by using this IR sensor to detect the distance between the car and your hand. And based on the distance it detects, it makes different reactions such as stop, go backward, and go forward. Okay, I'll cut the cliche and let's directly get to the point. So as you all know, machines, they cannot mm, like critical or creative thinking but they can do the task that you placed for them. For example, your programming is your task and you're gonna let it run the programming and make several reactions based on the condition, right? Well, that sounds a little bit mm, awkward, but let me explain you with a very simple words. So let's start with an if and do, or let's say if else clause of the program. So as, um, let's say, for example, if you're a kid and we say if you finish your veggies in the plate and you can watch the TV for one hour tonight. So that is a very simple example of a conditional clause of if and do. If finish veggie, you can watch TV for one hour. All right, so who will be the judge? Of course, maybe your parent? who are gonna see, like, finish this vegetable is true or false, and they can give you the instruction on do, which is watching TV for an hour. Or another example, like you're an adult, and let's say, if you finish your annual goal and you get a promotion in your payroll, for example, right? So yeah, in this case, let's go back to this clickbot. We say, if my hand is closed enough, then do is go backward, just like this. And if my hand is far away enough, it goes forward. And what else? It will be just stop right there, just like that, okay? So, an if and do clause is the very basic programming clause that I'm going to teach you today, which is you give it a condition and the machine will judge true or false and then do its reaction based on this judgment. Very simple, right? Okay, but um, However, it's just not like one or like a single judgment or let's say one single condition. We have several different scenarios. For example, for this one, we can say like close enough or far away enough or right in the middle or very far away, right? So that's in total like four conditions. Or for example, let's say in the real life is if you finish your veggie in the plate tonight or you can finish your veggie like twice the amount tomorrow or for whatever, like um, 30 times in this month, perhaps, right? So there could be multiple conditions you are putting in your program. All right, let's go back to the ClickBot again. So that I'm going to introduce you an expansion of if do, which is a if do and else do. That is two conditions, which is this condition is true or false, and moreover, which is if, of course, do, 
and else if. Or perhaps one more else if, if you have more than, say, three conditions out of it, right? And all the way goes, you can multiple as how many as you want. And last but not least, we will put another else at the ending, as the, let's say, we're run out of conditions, and that's the final activity it will do based on all of the judgment, all right? So, um, now we have explained the if do and if else, and of course, if and else if all go along. So how we can, you know, make this product, uh, make this program, put into the product and make it work. Here is what I have in mind. I'm going to guide you through from the beginning on how I designed this specific type of clickbot, all right? So let's say this is clickbot with the IR sensor at the, at the front. Okay, I think I'm a real life Picasso somehow. <laughs> and you know, the IR sensor, you know what it does, right? It says distance sensor in your manual book. It basically can detect the distance between like your hand or any obstacles between. All right, so in this case, we are gonna divide the conditions into Four, which is we are I'm using a range to indicate on how I designed this robot okay so the first range what I put is 10 centimeters which is I say and say if I put my hand within this range of 10 centimeters in front of the clickbot IR sensor then the clickbot will go backward and another zone here, oh, let's call this zone one, all right? And the second zone I put is like 25 centimeters, which means if your hands is in front of the IR sensor, larger or let's say higher than 10 centimeters, but still less than 25 centimeters, so we call this zone the second zone. And in this case, click button will stop, like just like now, stop right there and the third zone which is effective zone is in total is 45 centimeters which says if your hands are over 25 centimeters but still less than 45 then clickbot will go forward and last but not least oh sorry this the uh, zone three and the zone four, which is, oh, I shouldn't put a limit or a boundary here. If it's over 45 centimeters or whatever, it will stop right there, just like in zone two, right? Let me show you. So that's perhaps 20, yeah, about 25 meters and 10 meter, 10 centimeters goes backward. And a little bit over 45, it goes like that. All right, so that's how I design this IR sensor clickbot with my thinking. And you know, this is kind of a design in the programming or let's say functionality, all right? So um, I do not want to, you know, talk a lot of, of programming in this session, but still I have to mention it, right? Or you know, you don't have the basic idea on how you can dig into this Google blog lead. Okay, another very important thing to do before you are designing a program is drawing the workflow, which is, um, let me show you. So this circle here, I say start. And then remember, we have um, talked about the if and else if. So how are we gonna integrate those programming clause into our design in the functionality? That is how we're gonna design this program. And we should start with, of course, this workflow. So let's say um, zone one, you wanted to go backward, right? 
So you have to put a conditional functionality here, which is I'm using DS as distance sensor, and it detects the distance between your hands, which is less than 10 centimeters. I'm, I'm, I'm writing very roughly here, so yeah, I hope you can understand, all right? And let it run for the first judgment, which is true or false. If it's true, then we make ClickBot go backward. And if it's false, then we loop to another evaluation, or let's say conditional judgment, which is, say, the distance sensor are detecting the distance less than 25 centimeters. Okay, let it judge once more again, all right? And if it's true, like we said in this design here, it should be go to the zone two, which is stop. All right, so if it's still not correct, then we go to the third step of this judgment, which is 45 centimeters to detect, or let's say to evaluate, to judge, or whatever vocab you want to use, is the zone three, which is less than 45, but still higher than 25, all right? True, then we go forward. And if it's still not true, then that leads to our final activity here, which is also stop. All right. And those arrows I draw here is to indicate that because uh, to indicate that in this program, ClickBot or let's say a machine will judge every time once and once again from the very beginning uh, until it has one result for output okay oh missed one here okay so that's the workflow we have configured or let's say mm, it looks pretty clear now right it tells you how to do things or let's say it tells you how to tell the clipboard to do things step by step all right, so let's dig into this Google Broccoli programming and see how we can realize this program from a draft to reality. Okay, as you can see, this is our um, Google Broccoli interface. And what you need to do is by clicking this create, and you can see a almost blank interface here. It's like a piece of paper and you need to put contents in it, all right? So let's start. Um, I think it says program start, and there is a start here, so I think we're okay. So let's go to the first evaluation step, which is the distance sensor judges the distance less than 10 centimeters or not. So for this, we need to put a if do, of course, like we talked about. If you eat your veggie, then you can get your TV tonight. So if distance sensor get less than 10 centimeters, then do backward. So how we can fill in this uh, small mm, blank here after if we go right into operators. Oh, sorry, one more step. Let's say sensors It's right here. Distance sensor, like number X detected distance how many millimeters but I think you hmm the shape doesn't fit right that's because it lacks one more thing which is the in the in the operators to compare this distance that the IR sensor detected with how much uh, 10 centimeters okay so let's first fill in this into our if and do clause, then we put the distance sensor number X, detected distance, how many millimeters, 
And also, don't forget to put another number in here, which is 10 centimeters. And please pay attention that in the program it says millimeters, so we have to times 10, which is 100 millimeters to indicate 10 centimeters, right? And we put this equal, let's change it to less than, and we define the number x into the, oh, it should be number 5? Okay, I think the number is random. Okay, then I think we have finished the first, the judgment functionality here. So what we need to do is let it go backward. So we can do is find those uh, function in the actuators, which is here. The wheel number x plus direction rotates at how many rounds per minute. And we fit it in right there. Okay, and remember, select a number module from the operators. So um, there is a little tricky thing I want to tell you as well is the number x plus direction, how to define that in the Google Blockly interface. You must, um, I, perhaps you already know how to do that in the steering motion as we have already told you in the quick guide videos, right? So let's see how we can do that in the Google Blockly. So as you can see, if I click that number X plus direction, it takes me right here to the 3D model. So if I want this click bar to go backwards, so it should go, for example, this one, this and this two wheels are going like this direction, which is a very important thing. We'll, t we'll talk about it. Aha, CW and CCW. So CW means clockwise and CCW means counterclockwise. So in this case, if you want to let it run backwards, as you can see, the, it rotates like this way. It should be clockwise. So for this one, it's kind of different because if, it, if you want it to move backward, it actually goes counterclockwise. So do not make it wrong. Okay, so for this one, we go counterclockwise, this one as well. And for this wheel, we go clockwise, and same as this one. And it, as you can see, it shows the round rotation direction in this 3D model. And you can use your imagination to think about, okay, does it... So first is, are they aligned together? And second is, will it go exactly as you, as you wish, all right? and rotates at how many rounds per minute. So you can, in theory, you can put how many you want, right? But in this program, we limit your input numbers of how many rounds per minute to uh, from zero to 225. We'll explain why the 225 thing in the next episode. But let's keep that in mind for now. And 255 is perhaps too fast. I don't want it to hit my hand. I also, I don't want it to fall on the ground. So let's say, um, 40. Okay, so the first module is almost complete, saying that start detecting the distance if it's less than 10 centimeters, it goes backward. But of course, there's like um, two or three more that we need, to, we need to finish. And of course, now we need a else if function. And you can find it right here. Did you see the blue dot right here? If you click it, you will see else if and else that you can select. And you can drag it under this if. Okay, right there. So you've got a else if and do, just like a second secondary conditional evaluation, right? So what we need to do is the same thing. Find the operators. Do the distance sensor again, right here. Oh. Uh, distance sensor and find another, you know, the numbers. So we put distance sensor, the same one as I think is five. Yes, it's five. And for our secondary condition is less than 25 centimeters. All right. So we put 250 
as many meters. And again, we want it to what? Stop. If, if it's true, it needs to stop at the middle, at the zone two. All right. Wheels. Uh, actually, it doesn't matter if I you know, just randomly click CW or CWW. As, I, as you can see, I'm messing around here, but it doesn't matter because I'm going to put a number zero here. It does not move anyway, right? So why not be lazy at this time? Okay, so that's the second judgment. We have finished the first and the second. So now we're going for the third, which is going forward. As we already discussed in the zone three, if it's less than 45 centimeters. Um, of course, you would need to do is the same thing. Let's drag another else if down below. And um, I'm kind of lazy again because I don't want to do all this procession again. So there is a lazy way we have provided you in this Google Blockly using user interface, which is copy and paste. For example, I'm clicking this whole block. I click duplicate okay I'm getting a the whole thing all together so the only thing I need to do is change the numbers in the last I clear it I put 45 centimeters which is 450 and I duplicate again the activities of how the wheels should do and of course I should change the variables in the middle which is this time I wanted to go forward. So to go forward, this wheel and this wheel is going to do like this way, which is a counter clock wheel. And this wheel and this wheel right in this side will go like this, which is a clock wheel. All right. As you can see, and let's not change the rotation speed like let's keep it to 40 rounds per minute okay okay so mm, that's one two three okay so that's uh left us to the final step which is the activity four but this time we're not going to use another else if because we're running out of condition and we just need one more activity if we want clickbot to do so we click on the same blue dot again and you know drag an else here which means it's about, let's take it to an end. And again, I'm gonna be lazy by duplicating a block right here. Hmm, I think that's almost done, but seems I'm forgetting something. So as you can see, if I run the program following my uh, workflow, which is whatever it do, it will just perform a singular activity and we'll stop right there so of course it does not work like you want it to continuously run for a lot of times or let's say infinite and there is a very easy way you can do that which is add a loop out of the whole program so that you can let clickbot to run this whole process uh, this whole process a lot of times or at least as many as you want and it's very easy to do in Blockly which is getting the controls and select this loop okay and let's get this big one out put the loop and fit it in right there okay so now loop has covered our whole big Google Blockly program so now it should be okay to run continuously Let's try it out. Okay, it's going very smooth, right? And again, let's review all the bullet points here. So 250 millimeters, 25 centimeters, it will stop. If it's less than 10 centimeters, it goes backward with your hand. And again, 25, if it's 45, okay, goes forward. And it's more than that, it stops again. So that's the three conditions we created for ClickBot to judge and the four activities we want ClickBot to react. It's cool, right? Okay, so that will be all for today's Google 
pro programming session, and I think I will put my design with my programming in the community, and you're very welcome to download and use it directly. But you know what? I recommend you to do what I have did, like basically follow my instructions and try if you can program your own clickbot. And you know what? It's better if you can, you know, have your own creativity based on what you have learned today, and make your another style of clickbot with perhaps expand my functionality. And I'm looking forward to see your design in the community. All right. If you like this video, please you know comment below, and I'll be replying you in the comments. Okay. So until next time, see you next time. Bye bye.